everyone, welcome to today's video. This is a video that I have actually never done before. I am going to be showing you how I achieved this look right here using a full face of Allure Magazine's Best of Beauty winners. Allure Magazine has been putting out their Best of Beauty issue every year for as long as I can remember, at least since I started in the beauty industry, which was 1996. I'm going to do a little bit of research and see when they actually first started the Best of Beauty, but it's been a long, long time. And to be honest with you, I haven't really paid much attention to that list in years because it seemed to be the same products over and over. Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk winning Best Foundation. Now I agree, it's an excellent foundation, but when you start to see the same products year after year after year, I thought for sure when I looked at this year's list, I would find the Luminous Silk, the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder, the Laura Mercier Primer, the Maybelline Great Lash Mascara. These were products that just seemed to be the same over and over and over. So when I looked at this year's list, having not looked in a very, very long time, I was excited to see a wider variety of brands, newer products to the market. And as I was looking through the list, I realized that I had a good majority of the products that were named Best of Beauty by Allure. So I thought, why not do a full face using these products and at the same time, give you my thoughts on them. Do I agree that they're the best of the best? Maybe yes, maybe no. Now, before I get into applying these products and talking about them, you may be looking at me thinking, Risa, those lashes were a questionable choice. These are far more dramatic lashes than I think I've ever worn on my channel. Well, please keep in mind that I did not pick these. Allure Magazine picked these. So let's get into it. This is a full face of Allure Magazine's Best of 2022 winners. While there was a face primer on the winner's list, there was no eyeshadow primer. So I'm just going ahead and applying a little bit of my P. Louise eyeshadow base. There were actually two face primer winners, the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer Hydrating Primer and also the Mattifying Oil Control Primer. Because my skin is oily, I'm going for the Mattifying Oil Control. I have not used this primer in a while simply because I've been testing out some others and I've been really loving those. I especially love the new ones from Kelly Ray and Hourglass, but I was actually looking forward to seeing how this one performed under the foundation winner, which is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. I don't reach for this foundation that often simply because it's not the best for my oily skin. It is a bit more on the radiant side. Well, it's called Radiant Foundation, so I guess you should expect it to be. You know, one of the upsides of doing a voiceover instead of a real-time talk-through is that I can tell you how these held up when used together. And I have to say, I was very impressed by the combination of this foundation and the Smashbox Primer because it left my skin looking really, really nice and natural all day long. The Smashbox really helped to take down the radiance of the NARS foundation for me, which is what I want. For concealer, the winner was the Lancome Tante Idole Ultra Wear. And I will be putting the shade names next to the product names down below in the description box. When I first got this concealer, I really, really loved it. It is a very, very good concealer. It has nice coverage. But since then, I've tried about, oh, I don't know, five or six new concealers. And while this one probably ranks in the top 10, I'm not so sure it would rank in the top five. I do think it is very good though. It's natural looking, it doesn't crease. I'm just liking some of my other concealers better at this time. There were a few bronzer categories, but in the liquid bronzer category, the winner was this Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. I've loved this for a long time. I don't talk about this one that often though because it's usually out of stock everywhere. I have heard some people say that they have difficulty blending this product, but I don't. I actually agree with Allure. I think it is pretty great and worthy of winning this category. The loose powder winner was the NARS Light Reflecting Powder. This is another product that I have had in my makeup stash for a while, but haven't reached for. 
I'm applying it with a little triangle puff I buy on Amazon, and yeah, I was pleasantly surprised with how blurring this powder was, how nicely it's looking under my eyes, it's giving them a real brightening effect, it doesn't look heavy or cakey. You know, I feel like I say the words cakey and heavy at least three times in every video I do. In the brow category, two of the winners were the Benefit Cosmetics Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil and the e.l.f. Brow Lift. I didn't own the e.l.f. Brow Lift, so I had to go out and buy it. I always begin by brushing my brows up and then filling them in with quick, small strokes. I do like this brow pencil, but I personally prefer a brow pencil with a twist-up applicator like the Benefit Precisely My Brow versus a pencil that you sharpen which is funny because I feel the exact opposite way when it comes to lip pencils. Now I'm using the e.l.f. Brow Lift Wax, and I'm bending the head of the wand applicator to easier get into the container. And now I'm simply brushing up my brow hairs. I actually think this product has better hold than the ABH version, and I can 100% see why it won Allure's award. It is so good, especially for the price. Now I'm just carving out my brows with concealer like I always do. In the eyeshadow palette category, one of the winners was this NYX Ultimate Queen eyeshadow palette. And I talked about this in a video several months ago when it first came out. I loved it then, I love it now. To start the eye look, I'm using two of the lighter browns in the palette. I'm blending them through my crease. Then I'm using a mid-tone brown and tapping and blending that on the outer corners, making a V shape, and then slightly blending that into the crease as well. These shadows are pigmented, blendable. There's not a lot of kick up or fallout. Now I'm just using my finger to apply a shimmering light taupe shade to my lids. For eyeliner, the winner was this Hourglass Voyeur Waterproof Gel Eyeliner. I do like it for how creamy and blendable it is, but my sensitive eyes do not like gel liners, so it really bums me out that I can't use this to line my water lines. I can only use it, as you see here, along my upper lash line. I'm creating a slight wing with a pencil, smudging it out with a brush, and then I'm using the black shade from the NYX palette to smoke out the line even more. So this is what the eyes end up looking like. Next, I'm using the matte ivory shadow and placing that under the arch of my brows. And now I'm using a tiny pencil brush and running the same two shades I used in my crease along my lower lash lines. After curling my lashes, I'm grabbing the new Tower 28 Mascara. This was a winner in the clean beauty category and I am so glad that it won because it is so, so good. When it comes to mascaras, it takes a lot to impress me because I do have such short, fine, sparse, and blonde lashes, but this one is pretty fantastic. It truly gives you tons of volume and length. Sadly, there is no mascara in the world that's going to make my puny lashes look like fake lashes, but this one has done a great job at making them look dark and full without any clumps or smudging. In the blush category, the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Liquid Blush was one of the winners. And I couldn't agree more. I have raved about this product, I think, ever since it launched. One thing you need to know about this product, though, is that a little bit goes a very long way. As you can see here, I went a little overboard even just using a tiny dot of the product. The good news is it's pretty easy to blend it out and the bottle will last you probably forever.
Unfortunately, I don't own either of the best highlighter winners, which are the Milk Makeup Bionic Glow and the Deck of Scarlet Mirror Glaze Highlighting Trio. And I simply didn't have time to buy either of those. And I have so many highlighters that I love, like this one from Say. It is a liquid highlighter and it is beautiful. Best Satin Lipstick went to the Armani Beauty Lip Power Longwear Color Lipstick. I couldn't agree more on this one either. I absolutely adore this lipstick. I've talked about it many times on my channel. I think I own six or seven shades now. The only other product I didn't have and couldn't get was the Best Lip Liner, which they have as Merle Norman's Cosmetics Plush Lip Liner. This one surprised me. I honestly didn't even realize that Merle Norman was still in business. And aside from that, I just feel like there are so many other more easily accessible lip liners out there that are fantastic. So I'm just applying this nude lip liner from Natasha Denona. And topping off this lip combo is the winner for Best Lip Oil, which is this one from Clarins, another product that I have spoken about in the past. I think I had it in a Favorites and Fails video a couple months ago. It is really, truly an excellent lip oil. I think it is better than the one from Dior. In my opinion, it's definitely more hydrating. When I looked at the False Lash winner category, they had the Ardell Individuals for the Natural Look, a brand I had honestly never heard of for the, I guess you could say, Daytime Lash. But for the Dramatic Lash, I was able to do a buy online pickup in store for these Lash Drip Lashes from Kiss. They're supposed to give a wet effect, and the style Allure chose is called You Do You. Because I did buy online pick up in store, I did not see just how dramatic these lashes are. When I took them out of the box, I just had to laugh. In my opinion, these lashes are more for Halloween. But then again, I'm older, I have small hooded eyes. Perhaps they just aren't meant for me and look fabulous on someone else. Obviously they do, or Allure probably would not have chosen them. I felt like I could not wear them as is. There was just no way so I trimmed them to make them half lashes, and that was a little bit better. Not great, but definitely better. And then here we have the completed look. I have to say, I think the lashes are kind of growing on me. I don't hate them. They're definitely a going out lash. They are not ones that I would wear on a daily basis. But yeah, I don't hate them. And the good news is they were not super expensive. I think they were around $5 and I had a CVS coupon. So I think I paid like $3. So I really do hope you enjoyed watching this video and seeing how this look came together and hearing my thoughts about the Allure Magazine Best of Beauty 2022 winners. Every product I used in this video will be linked down below in the description box. I will also provide you with a link to the entire Allure Magazine Best of Beauty list. There are a lot of products and categories that I did not cover in this video. I specifically wanted to focus on the makeup products. Please let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on some of these winners. Have you tried them? Do you love them as much as Allure seems to? Let me know what you think of the lashes. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I do upload new content at least twice per week. So please hit that subscribe button and join the Risa Does Makeup family. I also post more content over on Instagram and TikTok. The username is the same, Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video.